All right, folks. Thank you. We're going to shift back to Hollywood. It's just too much fun. Hollywood on strike. Is that good or bad for America? You know what I think. Anyway, we have DeRoy Murdoch, senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research and Fox News contributor, and Joe Concha, media and politics columnist at The Messenger. I'm getting that. He's uh, your boss, is, uh, your owner is sending me stuff, and a Fox <laughs> News contributor and author of the excellent book, Come On, Man. Joe Concha, since your boss is sending me copies of The Messenger, I want to begin with you. Okay. Uh, if Hollywood shuts down, is that good or bad for America? This is an industry in great decline, right? <laughs> and let's put it this way. There's been a writer's strike going on for months, and Stephen Colbert and Fallon and Kimmel and Seth Meyers, all these broadcast network late-night hosts have been gone. You don't hear people talking about how much they miss the content, oh, right? Tra what a tragedy, and now remember, that you mention it. What? Gee whiz. Yeah, it's like, they, it's like they didn't even exist. But look, 25 years ago, Hollywood was still a very big deal. You know that 57 million people watched the Oscars 25 years ago on ABC? You know what they got last year? And they were doing somersaults over this because they thought, thought it was such a great number. 19 million. Oh. So then people say, oh, well, it's cord cutting. Uh-uh. Last year's Super Bowl was watched more than any other Super Bowl in history. So don't tell me that it's cord cutting and people are going elsewhere. People don't like being lectured to. They want the escapism, and more and more, it's gone. So I don't know if these actors or writers have the leverage that they once would have because, again, mm -hmm. I'm not sure the that numbers, people will really miss it all the, that much. The business model is not really working. DeRoy Murdoch, what do you think of this? I just want to throw a couple things. Number one, uh, the unions who are going on strike are blaming Biden inflation. All right, there's articles about that, which I find very amusing because they all love Joe Biden. So I propose that they do a six part series on Bidenomics and how bad it is. <laughs> I don't think that's coming. The second part is Bob Iger who is the head of one of the most woke companies in America, he is saying the workers are making too much money and the actors are making too much money. So you scratch an owner deep enough, uh, it's class warfare like the Gilded Age. Now, I just find yeah, that kind it, it of is, fun. Yeah, ha, Bob Iger, you can see him with the, the top hat on, looking like the Monopoly man. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? Those <laughs> writers are demanding too much money. And by the way, I like the Gilded Age, but I'm just saying yeah. it's ironic. It was covered in gold. We like that, right? Yeah, it is ironic. Well, you know, if this goes on, uh, we, we think about the writers and the actors, but you also have the makeup people and people who bring the craft services and mm -hmm. all the, the lighting people, the sound people, a lot of other people there who, who rely on the actual production to pay their bills. And this thing is going on months and months. I also th found the, the timing of the strike very strange. The, the writer's strike started kind of at the end of last season when we we're going to go in reruns anyway. Mm. If they were smart. They would have started this new season and declared the strike maybe in October after the new shows had come on. And all of a sudden, the networks and the studios are saying, oh, my God, we don't have any programming. We've got to put reruns on at the time that the new episodes would be coming out in the, the Christmas, uh, the Thanksgiving Christmas movies, movies would be coming out just in time for the Oscars. So very strange timing on this. But if this goes on and on, it's going to hurt a lot of people who are not famous folks whose names we know. Well, that's true. Um, you know, Joe Concha, there, there is a sub-theme in here. A lot of these writers are worried about being replaced by AI. Mm -hmm. You thought about that? I said, I, I don't know that I buy that, but I don't know enough about it, actually. Okay, so I'm with the actors and the writers on this one, mm -hmm. where AI can re effectively replace an actor or an actress using their likeness indefinitely without that actor or actress actually getting compensated for it. Oh. So they're saying that's a whole bowl of wrong. AI can replace journalists in the journalism community. It could also replace script writers as well. So that's what they're worried about, that to, because the, the industry is shrinking, to find the cost cutting, simply have a computer write a movie script as opposed to mm -hmm. an actual human being. So that, that's where the concern is here. But DeRoy makes a great point. We're still going to see the big movies that are, that are coming this summer, right? Um, Oppenheimer, the great Chris Nolan will be directing that, the last great director uh, in Hollywood right now, young one anyway, relatively young. Uh, Barbie will still be coming out as well. I know you're not going to be seeing them. Uh, Barbie I, will still be Barbie, and Ken will still be Ken. I'm very happy about with that. that. that that's Just consistent. That's, you know, that's, that's a good thing. That's no. almost as good as them complaining about Biden inflation. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please, Deroy, go ahead. I mean, no, look, I, 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 come on. Most of the product yeah. is lousy. A lot of we it's, agree on that. A lot of it's really? lousy. Well, I mean, a lot of you get Top Gun Maverick. And yeah, you, that, there's that some the fabulous you get some stuff. Good movies I'll out buy. There. I agree. A, a, a I love movies. Ye Yellowstone. Good conservative. Yeah. A lot of these movies are sort of based on on the video spy games. Spy Among and that Friends. Sort of stuff. I love yeah. that. Damian Lewis. But I, I'm Harris. skeptical that an AI program can do anything other than just, just the most you know, completely stiff, stilted dialogue. If you're going to have interesting, nuanced dialogue and unusual plot. So you think that's an overbaked concern? I think so. I mean, computers can do a lot of stuff, but I don't think they can come up with fascinating plot, plot twists and, and things that we, we get out of really good movies. I just think if the product was better and the values were better, I mean, I think Hollywood values are terrible, Joe. I mean, it's just... I, I, 
I like some of the movies. I don't like most of the movies. It's a question of that. You know, the, you go back, there's a special running on, I think it's Amazon um, Premium, the life of Jack Warner, used to own Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. how patriotic he was during the war, how his movies promoted American entrepreneurship sure. and business success. You don't see that anymore. I'll give you the last word. You don't see originality. You don't see it. Originality seems to have gone out the window. Everything is a remake now, or they extend the franchise as long oh. as they can. Indiana Bones, Jones, excuse me, for yeah. example, <laughs> right? An 80-year-old Star Wars. How many, how many Star Wars That's are right. People see? aren't He's watching that, that either. Yeah. Spider-Man. Oh, no, after a while. Indiana Jones, I think the last one really Bombed, it did not? bomb. Yeah, yeah, completely. Because right. again, let's let's see some original movies instead of these. It was beaten by Sound of Freedom, wasn't it? You guys, Sound of Freedom did beat it. And everybody should watch Gutfeld anyway. And Roy Murdoch and Joe Concha. Thank you ever so.